Do you want to drink the toilet water? Well, come with me. Let's drink some toilet water, just like Harold the Plumber did. Harold the Plumber is a short uh, comedy drama film that I created and produced for the film festival market about 18 months ago. And since that time, it's been going globally successfully around the world, where it's picked up a whole bunch of gongs, film festival selections, awards, and some special screenings and feedback from people in the film industry. It's so exciting to finally get to that point that then you know an audience can just watch the film that you spent so long working on. Harold the Plumber came to me as a voice. Uh, I heard Harold, uh, I heard the sort of character that he would need to be. And I also felt like a voice was talking to me a little bit like a kid's picture book. And so when I wrote up the story of Harold the Plumber, that's kind of what I had in mind. I was, I was very much inspired by um, Henry the Book Eating Boy by Oliver Jeffries and that idea of, you know, a, an everyday character then gaining some sort of superpower and going on that journey. And that's what um, Harold goes on. So Harold one day discovers magic toilet water, which makes him super smart. He's suddenly a brilliant, intelligent person, which is what he was lacking, of course, what he thought he was lacking, you know, because as again, as people, we quite often feel we lack things and we don't see ourselves through the lens that other people see ourselves through. And you never really do. You know, I know this with the people that are closest around me that they might compliment me on something that I don't see. And likewise, I compliment them on things and they don't see it themselves either. So Harold is a metaphor for that, that, you know, we need to look at ourselves and realize our self-worth, our self uh, actualization and, and what we actually bring to the party. Because every single human on this planet brings stuff to the table and it's really important to always acknowledge that I feel and to be and to be you know they're willing to share that with other people. I'm not a huge fan of voiceover but this film in the way that it came to me and the and the way the character developed I felt like it had to have a voiceover and it had to have kind of like a classic narrative voiceover someone actually speaking through things not hopefully filling in the gaps because you know that's sort of a bit of a cliche of voiceover but actually someone that sort of adds to the story of Harold a little bit like how picture books did I wanted to make it very minimalistic in that way so you know children's book you don't have very much <laughs> A chance to get people to the finish line and and to attract a child's interest as a father of three. I know it's really hard to gain and hold their interest. And so I was just, you know, wanting it to be a bit minimalist in that way. Um, however, the world itself, again, like picture books with children, is, is quite outlandish. So the world that Harold lives in is not quite the same world that we have. And so, again, I was kind of inspired by films like um, Wes Anderson's films. Um, Napoleon Dynamite was another one that I was really thinking. It's a great film. Go check it out. Um, and just that idea of a world that's a little bit abstract to our own world. And so it's still, you know, the same realms. We're not in the Matrix. It's not run by AI or anything. But we are looking at a film that has, you know, colour is really important. And it's going to be overly used a little bit. So watch it closely and you'll notice that um, the characters all have a colour theme. And so that was something I set out. And the colour themes actually represent or symbolise what the colour can stand for. Because we have a variety of you know, B characters in this film that all interchange with Harold to emphasise what he's going through in such a short succession of time. And so I wanted colour to emphasise that um, feedback that to the audience, that there was something extra going on there, that you know there is a little bit of a subliminal, you know, extra symbolic meaning, you know, and we need to do that in film. You know, and um, also in terms of like makeup and special effects, I don't mean we have big explosions and stuff. It's not that kind of film. But we also, in terms of makeup, I needed Harold to kind of look, um, you know, pretty average to accentuate his age and to, and to kind of look a little bit down um, where he is at the start of the film. Uh, as he drinks the water, he, he kind of magically becomes better. So he needed the makeup again to kind of accentuate that now he's like a much happier, brighter person. Um, and then I also needed the, the effect of how the water starts to negatively affect his health. Um, you know, him starting to look sicker and sicker. And, you know, the makeup was just done so beautifully that way by our artists, 
both Tracy and um, Katie, who just did such a great job in, in kind of accentuating that upward cycle of Harold and then the downward cycle of Harold and then him coming out at the end, um, so to speak. This was a really interestingly cast film because short film traditionally, you know, it's not great to have loads and loads and loads of like actual characters with lines and stuff. Um, however, I'm a big believer in, you know, I got this idea, I developed it and that's what happened. My writing developed it to that point. And so once I was committed to making it, yes, we need sort of 10 actors. Harold has three very close friends and so we need them all to be of a similar age. Um, we need them to be a sort of a bit of a diverse mix. That was the point of the friendship side. It was an ensemble cast and so you need an ensemble bunch of actors and I was really, really privileged to source so many great like uh, actors locally where I'm based and also externally, you know, in Perth, Western Australia um, to kind of fill out the zone. You don't traditionally make a short film with loads and loads of characters because obviously it becomes harder. And this was something that really tested my scheduling ability. And I will say it went well. Uh, we just had the one outside the road rage scene that was scheduled for about an hour later. And just with that time ticking on, we started to get to that point where people needed to, um, you know, we needed to shoot outside before the sun went down. So, you know, at the end of the day, that shoot with so many different actors coming at different times that, you know, ended up only being one hour over the essential kind of uh, end time, which is not too bad, one hour of overtime. I think we can handle that in the unions. Um, so yeah, I was, I was very happy with that. But every single actor brought something to this and I loved that. And, and it's definitely something like I feel as a director, when I work with actors, I want them to have the opportunity to bring something to the table. You know, I, when you write a character, you know, that that's here, that's, that's in my head and maybe in my heart and it's on the page now, but it's great for an actor to come in. Like you can cast someone and go, wow, that's sort of the person I saw and you know, their mannerisms and the way they are. But then if they can kind of also just bring another layer to that and, and maybe even the way that the scene unfolds, they kind of unfolded a little bit extra. Um, you know, that that's just brilliant. That is when you get that real creative flow happening with actors. And every single actor I had on this, you know, no matter how small the role, they all brought something and they added to that eclectic mix of this. So thank you actors, you were all very, very brilliant. Day one, Harold the Plumber shoot here at Mandra Performing Arts Centre on the big stage, and it went terrifically. Got a great little crew. It's a fantasy sequence of Harold and the doom and gloom scene of Harold, and it went swimmingly. Really super happy with the performance of Alan, who plays Harold, and also the crew that really worked together on this. I'm super pumped, super excited because tonight, is the eve before the next film shoot. So we did day one the other day and tomorrow is day two of a three day film shoot for Harold the Plumber. Everything is lined up uh, for tomorrow's shoot and the weekend. We had a bit of a last minute kind of location change just due to the fact that the uh, uh, this location that became available changed um, the final one of the final scenes of the film with with the character of the Lone Shark and uh, he Harold's friend Benny, uh, and we discovered that we could actually get access to Peel Thunder uh, through our wonderful AD Jenny, and it just kind of shaped the scene in a much quirkier way to be able to shoot at Peel Thunder with this football stadium in the background rather than what I initially had as being a dark and dingy kind of loan shark, you know, industrialized sort of um, idea. Now we're going for more of a gambling um, millennial wanker. <laughs> so I think hopefully that will add also a little bit more quirkiness to what uh, Harold the Plumber is all about. Uh, I'm, so we've got cast. Awesome cast lined up. We had a great day just with Alan the other day. Now I'm also super excited to get into a film shoot where we've got a collection of actors coming. They're trickling in throughout the day. Um, they're all minor characters, but they've all got their own little uh, special trait to them. And they're all there to kind of help us understand why Harold is such an idiot and then he's such a genius and why he needs to kind of change up his life and actually realize who he is as a 
person as a character. Um, so we've got a beautiful set of cast coming tomorrow. Uh, super talented. I'm super pumped to get them on screen and to just dabble and play with those characters. Uh, really hopeful um, as a director to lock in a couple of shots that I've got in my vision and get the script kind of done and then to actually allow the actors to have a play and also like the DOP to have a play. Behind the scenes, um, Jenny AD has been doing so many wonderful uh, organisation of the whole film crew and cast. Um, also, she's been adding some props in and so has our two prop departments of Nancy and Azalea. They've been putting a great level of work to kind of build a bit of a quirky world that I've been going for. There's definitely a couple of motives that I want in there and uh, we've all worked hard at making sure that those motives are going to sort of slightly appear throughout the film. So I'm super pumped about that, getting them on screen, adding that depth of, of a motive into it. Uh, we also have Tracy and Katie on uh, our makeup and hair specialists. And again, the characters are all uh, going to have some twerks to their hair and their makeup. I've gone for a colour scheme in Harold as well, again, to add in a bit of a weird ass quirky setting. I'm kind of going for an idea that the world, we don't really know when it is set, although it's modern. So it's to just to try to create a bit more of a quirkiness in the world that he exists in. Um, hopefully, in terms of the characters, they all seem realistic to us. But I'm hopeful of that the world is a quirky world. <laughs> so I'm really super pumped um, to get the characters together and the actors to bring them to life. <laughs> breathe some life into them and make them into something super special, uh, something that hopefully uh, resonates with uh, an audience interested in quirky dramedy, dramedy <laughs> comedy drama, and something that also has a bit of attention to detail in the, in the world building of this short film, Harold the Plumber. So it's going to be a bit of a now by tonight, I'm super excited. I can't wait to get on set and start making it. <laughs> it was so much fun on Tuesday uh, with the crew and Alan playing Harold. And I just can't wait to get on tomorrow and, and allow those actors to play in this world that Harold exists in and to really prove that he is ultimately not such an idiot. He's a nice guy. And so that's going to be what we're going to try to deliver in this film. So we're halfway through Harold uh, day two. Been a bit of a flustering start to the day. We had sort of a venue double booked and sound issues. So a little bit behind schedule. <laughs> so we're going to definitely um, pick up the time frame on that this afternoon. But it's been so much fun. Been getting some really great performances. Lions living a little bit of movie magic, which I absolutely love. Anyway, on to the afternoon shoot. So that's... Day two of a three-day shoot, Harold the Plumber. Uh, fantastic day. Uh, the crew and cast work so great. Uh, it was a bit of a shaky start and we had to do a whole reschedule of what was happening. And huge credit to the cast and crew. We just turned it on a dial and worked our way through it. So I was super happy, super chuffed. Um, I think there was a bit of stress and adrenaline running for a few hours there. But we got in and we made some creative magic. I'm super excited to get into the edit suite and kind of see some of that magic because I know there's some there. Uh, it's so many cool cast members came through, some fantastic actors. They really, you know, brought the world of Harold alive. And Alan playing Harold just was superb. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Anyway, so on to day three tomorrow, and I am super pumped and super excited. Can't wait. That's a wrap. Day two. It was great. Went really well. I'm super happy with the cast and crew. We had a lot of fun. Um, creative energy was burning this morning on day three of our three-day shoot, and um, we just nailed through some scenes. It was that realisation that you had a fair bit of work to do. <laughs> a lot of scenes to get through today, uh, but we were on the one location, this house um, that I rented, it's an Airbnb place, and we had to get through scenes of Harold's house, his doom and gloom of 
not being himself and his friends coming over to kind of pull him out and make him realize his true power. We then also had their great card scenes, which was at this table. And I was really happy with how they went down. Uh, we got to do some interesting shooting with that. So I'm excited to get in and see how that all rolls together. Uh, and then we did the famous squirt in the face scene. <laughs> the magic toilet water that's gonna spray up into his mouth. We had to be creative because we're in a tiny little toilet and it came out, I think, really interesting. So I got in there with the camera, Daniel got in there with the camera, the DOP. Uh, we did some handheld stuff, we did some B-roll shots, we did some super close stuff. Again, uh, we, we reversed that and had to fake some spray coming up uh, out of Daniel's sort of lap, <laughs> which was interesting. But we made it happen, special effects happening. All thanks, especially to a Interesting design done by Jenny, our AD. So it all comes together. Such a great cast. Uh, Alan, who played Harold, was just through the roof. You know, constant professional and just delivered on Harold. And today having the boys, Lenny, Rennie and Benny, played by um, Gino, Justin and Ron, were extremely fabulous. They're so well matured into their acting roles uh, overall and their experience came out and it was beautiful to see. So they sat around this table and delivered some awesome uh, or de sorry, delivered some awesome uh, physical acting which needed to get across. I can't wait to get into the edit suite and see how it all comes together. So, and, and the crew that worked was fantastic. We had Daniel on DOP, uh, Jenny R AD, Jimmy on sound, Nancy and Azalea on props, Katie and Tracy on uh, hair and makeup, and Brian on stills. So it was a great shoot. I'm super pumped about seeing this end film and letting it go out there into the wild. Can't wait. It's going to be fabulous. Uh, I think there's some real serious moments and there's some real comedy involved. I'm happy. I'm a happy director. So now it's pack up, pack up time, the glamour of film shooting and getting into the edit suite tomorrow. Probably. <laughs> Might have one day off and then we get into it. That is a wrap for Harold the Plumber. We are editing, editing, editing Harold the Plumber. That's what we're doing today. Lots of editing, collating, doing the rushes, putting stuff to camera. And it's exciting, super, super fun, really. Some of it's not so fun, lots of cataloging. It's exciting to finally see the action on the big screen and to realize that the actors have brought life into these characters that were inside my brain. And then it's also really cool to see all the work that the crew put together to make Harold come alive. We are in the throes of editing Harold the Plumber. From going from an, a really exciting, huge, big film shoot, great cast, awesome crew, we jump into the edit suite and it's pretty much me <laughs> alone uh, watching all the rushes. So what I like to do is I look at all the rushes. Uh, so you look at every single piece of footage that we recorded. Uh, what I do is I have an Excel document open whilst I'm going through the rushes and I'm going through and labeling the rushes. So I'm going back to my shot list uh, and scene numbers and I'm making sure that this scene and shot list is all according to my sort of initial plan and then maybe what happened on the day. Because of course on the shoot things go right, things go perfect, things go a little bit haywire. And so some of that ordering needs to change up or, or be a bit fluid when you are on the shooting um, days. So that process is me watching the films, uh, making a catalogue, a numbering system, a listing system. I also put in their uh, comments. So I'm looking at, you know, was I happy with the shot? Um, how the actors delivered their lines? Did we get the moment that we needed to get. And what I'd like to say is that we totally got it in the rushes. <laughs> I am really super excited about how things were delivered. Uh, there's definitely some magic moments. There's definitely some, 
you know, money shots, as we like to say in the business. Uh, there's definitely some beautiful, heart-wrenching stuff and also some genuine comedy, I believe, uh, which is exactly what this film is all about. So huge thank you, huge kudos to the actors and the crew for pulling that off. Likewise, the sound files, they're recorded separately onto a sound recorder and those files need to also be go through and ordered in that same ordering system as the film files. And you have the opportunity to throw out anything that was just not working on the day or, you know, sometimes we press record and then things go wrong like lighting or sound or something just doesn't quite happen. And so you can kind of clear that away. And now when you get into the edit suite, you're looking at the best of the best. It's all nice and ordered. It's all neat and ready to roll on creating the narrative arc in the edit suite. So I'm really super pumped about it because I feel like in the raw footage file, we got some excellent stuff. We got some, you know, some amazing performances and we've got some pretty cool stuff going on, I think, for this film. So makes me very happy as a director. <laughs> and look, that cataloging is not exactly my total field of experience, but it's the way that I do it. It's the, it's the best system that I've got currently. And then we go from there and now we can have it all nice and neat, neatly ordered. And so that way you'll know that you're picking out the best of the best. I can refer back to my notes and I can make a story arc that is the essential story that we had in the script of Harold the Plumber. So now I'm really pumped to go forwards and actually create that arc in the edit suite. That is the next step. So that's the really exciting part and that's the little editing update for now. I'll kind of come back and do an editing update probably in about two weeks time. We should have something that is like what I would say a really solid tight draft and then maybe starting to look at things like those finishing touches of special effects, sound um, sound design and also, you know, music, that kind of, that sort of side of it and also, you know, those final sort of polishing up bits, maybe a bit of colour grading if needed for Harold the Plumber. We're ready to launch the film, which is fabulous. It's coming out Sunday, the 13th of August, 2023. It'll be available on my YouTube channel. So you get to see it. Uh, you know, your eyeballs will get to watch it like with everyone else and it will be readily available online, free, always free on YouTube, probably. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm super pumped to share it. So make sure you subscribe and that, you know, you've, you've got access to my channel and you don't miss anything. Will you drink the toilet water? I would not recommend it, but you know, Harold does and he becomes super smart. So maybe there's something in it. And anyway, stay tuned, watch the film. Let me know what you think once it's out and about.